guys, welcome to this episode of Experts for Business, where we enlighten our viewers by interviewing experts for business in their area of expertise. My name is Derek Higgs, and my co-host is James Barber. James, how you doing, man? Man, I am doing fantastic. How about you, Derek? Man, I'm doing great. You know, uh, this, this interview format that we've created has been awesome. We've interviewed some great guests, and uh, we've benefited, you know, from them and our audience is benefiting from their sharing knowledge and so on and so forth, you know, from their area of expertise, man, this has been great. I agree with you, Derek. We have another great guest lined up for this episode of Experts for Business. I am excited about this guest. Why don't you tell us a little bit about our guest? I'll do that. Let me make sure I can read your handwriting. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, he grew up in Brooklyn. Wow, an, an, another New Yorker. And after graduating from Stony Brook University, he relocated to Atlanta, where he attended the University of Georgia for master's degrees in both wildlife management and business administration. Interesting. Wow. In 1992, he joined his friend's small environmental management company as its CFO and helped grow that firm from under $3 million to well over $100 million. Wow. Impressive. He started Blue Wolf LLC because he loves entrepreneurship and is passionate about helping businesses with their financial, operational, and strategic issues. We would like to welcome Les Flynn to Experts for Business. How you doing, Les? Good, good. Thank you for having me. Awesome, great to be awesome. Here. <laughs> well, Les, I, when I was looking um, through some of the information about you, and I, saw, and I saw that you grew this business from less than $3 million to over $100 million, and you helped do that. Wow. I'm like, wow, that's impressive. Yeah, and sometimes absolutely. people ask me how I came up with my email address, because my email address is a little bit different, and I'll tell them, okay, my email address is the networking guru, 7777, and then at gmail.com, and they'll say, well, how did you come up with that? I said, well, number one, <laughs> the networking guru – that's the title of my series of books. And then uh, the number seven is the number of perfection. And then there are four original members of my family, my wife and myself and my two girls. And so that's the reason I came up with the networking guru 7777 for my email address. But Les, I'm interested to know how in the world did you come up with Blue Wolf? Well, uh, I wanted the name to have a meaning and I know a lot of people just will pick their last name as a business name or some other, um, you know, one of, I, I've recently in the last few years become kind of a student of a great set of books and strategy called blue ocean strategy. And it's a phenomenal strategy that businesses can use when they find themselves surrounded by competition and what they call in the red bloody waters and how do I find a way to move into the blue waters, clean, lots of fish, not a lot of competition. Okay. And these, uh, uh, the blue ocean strategy is a very methodical, but detailed method of figuring that out. And I, and I really am a believer in it. And so I said, well, I want to use blue. And it also people think of blue of like, you know, wide open spaces, uh, success many times as, right. as blue wolf besides my most favorite animal in the world, actually there's traits of wolves that if we exhibit them in business, we would be very successful. Okay, first of all, they're very team oriented. They work together in everything they do, taking care right. of the young, hunting, right? But yet there's clear leaders, right? You need clear leadership in business, right? right. Um, and, and even though uh, they work together, there is always, you can tell who's the alpha of the, of the pack. And then on top of that, they take care of everybody. They care about everybody in the pack and they take care of them. And that's how you should be in business. You should care about your staff, of course, your, uh, your customers and your vendors. So all these traits are really critical business traits as well. And we find them in how wolves live their lives. So I kind of put the two together and that's how I came up with Blue Wolf. I love it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, let's share with our viewers, you know, two or three key aspects of business where a business owner could use some guidance, especially in a time like now? Well, you know, I'm sure people have heard this before. Uh, and again, like you said, especially in today's uh, environment, number one, I would 
point out is cash flow. Uh, cash flow is so critical. I, I think a lot of people know that, but they don't necessarily pay attention to it. Um, and especially in good times. In good times, everything's going great. You don't really worry about cash. You're making money. You're paying your bills, and you go on your way. But <clears throat> tracking and forecasting your cash, I think, will maintain your health for long, you know, long into the future. And and when an, an event like this comes along, not that anyone could have predicted this kind of event yeah. we're in, <laughs> having that done cash flow management along the way probably would have prepared more businesses to sustain period of time without with little to no business so um, for me cash flow forecasting and understanding the you know and it doesn't have to go out for very far maybe just a few weeks but always tracking it when am I going to get my money and what do I need to pay and making sure that you're looking down the road that you always have cash in addition to weathering a bad storm if you're planning any kind of expansion in your business, and that could mean a lot of things for a lot of businesses, it could be mm -hmm. opening a new brick and mortar shop, it could just be moving it to a new geographic location, you're gonna need cash to sustain yourself until those new sales and that new operation starts to pay for itself. So cash flow, I'd say, really is king. It's a you know overused phrase, but it's true. The second thing, Again, it's gonna seem kind of like a no brainer, but when you start to think about it, understand your costs, the management of your costs and the use, right? Hmm. A lot of people in a business, right? They're working hard, they're in their business, things are, they're, they're focused on various things and costs tend to get, start to creep out of control, but it's not necessarily noticed. You start to spend money on things that if you really were able to step back and look on your business instead of within your business, you might say, as I might help someone say, is why are you spending this money? It's not really generating anything for you. Right. So cost tends to get out of control. And that's the management, but also um, how you use your costs. You know, you have to spend money on marketing, you have to spend money on lots of other things. Maybe right. you're a brick and mortar and you have rent for a space. Um, but uh, a good example is uh, I was helping a company who was looking to do marketing uh, and they wanted to do something that was going to be very fun and exciting and they thought it was a cool idea, but it was very locally oriented. It was like a car wrap, but their product was something they were going to sell nationwide. And so I, I said, you know, you're looking at something that's fun and exciting, but how is that money going to be spent? Are you going to get the bang for your buck? You have to really think, how am I going to spend my marketing dollars and where am I going to get more eyeballs or more people to be aware of what I'm selling, whether it's my product or your service. So, so yes, you have to spend money, but how you spend it and where you spend it could be much more important than saving money. So, so for me, cash flow overall, and then, really understanding your costs and how they're going to get used. Awesome. That is so key, Les, because what I have found out that let's just say you're taking on a project to add on to your house or you're finishing your basement or you're going to do some project. It usually ends up costing about double what you thought it would cost. And it ends up costing or taking about twice as long as you thought it was going to take to finish that project. And so it's the same way in business. Um, Les, some of our experts that we have on the Experts for Business show, they are relegated to just working in a certain area. Like maybe they can only work in one particular state or they can only work in the, um, you know, Southern United States, but mm. some they're not bound by geography. How is it with you, Les? Are you bound? Do you, I mean, could you work with somebody all over the world or do you just kind of work with some people that are local? Tell us, tell us a little bit about that. Well, I would say I'm not geographically bound. It probably makes more sense for me to stay focused, of course, in the United States because business law is different here than maybe in other countries. There are, there are obviously some commonalities in concepts, but, um, when it comes to really understanding maybe, you know, financial issues and rules that people have to follow in this country, I would say I'd stay in the United States, but otherwise not geographically bound. When I was with my company that we helped grow, 
Uh, we had offices, um, you know, from Guam to Eastern United States, and we did work overseas. But again, we were working mostly, of course, in U.S. dollars and primarily for U.S. customers. So, um, so no, not geographically bound. I guess you know what I, the advisory service and offering strategic and financial advice could apply to anywhere. Okay. Awesome. Right. Awesome. Well, Les, you know, you provided some very valuable information. Let us know, you know, how, how do you give back to others? Do you have, uh, are you, do you have a program or what have you where you can give back to others, especially during a time like this? Well, what I've done, um, and I've at least tried to do is, uh, uh, when we were first going through the, the SBA loan programs, the new ones that just came out, really, I guess it's been about three weeks now, is understanding it really in depth and then helping uh, business owners figure out what they needed to do and how they needed to do it. You know, a lot of people are, you know, there's a lot of fear out there today and that kind of makes people not necessarily think through everything they, they need to do. And so I was simply trying to be a resource to answer questions, uh, simplify a lot of the confusing messages that were coming in on those programs. And I, I, after emailing out some messages, I got people calling me that I didn't necessarily know and asked for some advice and, very happy to help them. Uh, to me, what was really important and is still important is making sure that our businesses survive. A lot of small businesses and they're the backbone of the United States and of our economy. So um, that's how I've been trying to give back is simply uh, to take what maybe appears to be a complicated subject, even though it not necessarily is, but, but put it into, you know, more digestible uh, format for people so they can quickly take that information to make use of it. Awesome. Well, Les, um, aren't, aren't there, some, I mean, that's what you're doing business-wise, but I think you do some other things too to kind of give back to society. Uh, can you elaborate on that? Uh, well, I guess in a sense, it's all business related. Um, you know, I, I, there's a couple of uh, disenfranchised communities that I try to donate my time. Uh, people who don't necessarily have a lot of options in life and many times they just turn to marketing their own skill uh, as a business and giving them advice so that they really get off on the right foot. Um, uh, one of my kids, you know, connects me to one of those communities and I, and I've offered that to him and all his friends to say, Hey, you know, anybody needs any help that I'm just here to answer questions. Um, I'm also an environmentalist. <laughs> That's why I joined an environmental firm and try to combine those two backgrounds that you mentioned at the beginning, um, the environmental and the business. I felt like combining the two would really probably provide more value uh, than just, you know, from strictly the environmental side. So, um, okay. That's great information. Well, Les, tell the viewers of Experts for Business how they can contact you. Probably the easiest way, because um, uh, you can remember the company name, so Blue Wolf. My website is bluewolf.llc, so not .com, but bluewolf.llc, and I have a contact page, and you just fill out your information. It takes about a second. Send it to me, and I'll return. I'll, I'll communicate with you right away. Um, that way, instead of missing phone calls or, or emails, which come in by you know, the hundreds, uh, that contact page is very specific. And when I see that, then I know that someone's reached out to me through the website. Awesome. 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 Well, Les, man, we really appreciate you being on this episode of Experts for Business. I appreciate you uh, having me here. And of course, I think what uh, you guys are doing and, and what everyone's doing uh, with this uh, series of videos is fantastic. I really appreciate that. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Derek, we had another great episode of experts for business. Yes, we did. So, you know, what was your biggest takeaway? My biggest takeaway would be the reminder. Sometimes you know things and you have it in your brain, but bringing it to reality and remembering the fact that you have to watch, watch your cost. So sometimes people in business, they'll just try this and try this and they'll spend here and spend there and spend there. But if you're not careful, you'll be spent all of your money that you have and you'll be out of business. And of course, the people that you're spending money with, they don't mind you spending that money, but you really do have to watch your cost. What about you, Derek? What was your biggest takeaway? 
<laughs> my biggest takeaway was when he talked about cash flow. You know, my, my wife, uh, she, she's the one that, that, that handles a lot of our cash flow, luckily, because I tend to be a spender and don't realize the cost. <laughs> so luckily, I have a wife who's pretty good at, at, you know, checking the books and so on and so forth. But that was the big thing. That's something she's always getting on me about, you know. Uh, but, but hey, listen, everyone, we want you to help us help you by sharing every post that we have. We will be posting these every week. You know, we do interviews uh, with different experts. And again, we need your help in spreading the word. In the future, we may also highlight a business, you know, spotlight a business, but we'll tell you some great business tips and show on the show so forth. We also have some short interviews and occasionally we'll also post some short segments on, as I mentioned, business tips. If you have not liked our Facebook page or subscribed to our YouTube channel, be sure to do so. James and I desire to be a blessing to you and everyone who watches Experts for Business. Be sure to tune in for the next episode of Experts for Business. Bye-bye. See you guys next time.